It's incredibly scary to learn a new program, especially when it has a steep learning curve. I may be a lot more comfortable in Clip Studio now, but it had some intense growing pains. Hopefully I can help you skip all that and show you how to quickly adopt the tools of Clip Studio Paint so you can create your own works of art. Let's go learn how to use Clip Studio Paint. I've used Photoshop for the last 10 years. I remember it being difficult at first, but now it's just like breathing. I don't really have to think about it, it just happens. It's smooth and fluid and feels so comfortable that my mind was screaming at me for trying to switch to a new program. It was incredibly uncomfortable at first, but I made a commitment. If you have a similar commitment or you're simply curious, my goal is to have you experience the least amount of discomfort possible as you learn to harness the awesome power of Clip Studio Paint. The first thing you should do when you open Clip Studio, because it was the most frustrating thing, is change your hotkeys. Shortcuts or hotkeys are the buttons you press to quickly switch to a tool. When you open the program for the first time, the hotkey for the brush tool is B. If you accidentally press it again, which you will do, you'll find that B is also the hotkey for the airbrush and the decoration tool. You'll save yourself a huge headache if you change around your hotkeys before you start any artwork. As an illustrator who switches between the brush tool and the eraser tool very frequently, it's really easy to accidentally click B multiple times. And every time you hit B, it cycles through the tools that use B as the hotkey. What I ended up doing was I kept hitting B and I would get to the decoration tool when I just wanted the brush. And it, it happened a lot more than you might think. <laughs> I started painting stars instead of a nice clean brush stroke because I was just too afraid to go in and change the hotkeys. <laughs> Don't let that happen to you. You can find the settings to change your shortcuts or hotkeys under File, Shortcut Settings. Double click the hotkey to change it to your preferred key. Another important thing you should do before you make any artwork is test out the pressure sensitivity, especially if you're coming from Photoshop. It's gonna feel really weird. You'll likely need to adjust it to make it feel more comfortable. By default, it's just a straight line, and typically you want a nice curve to your pressure sensitivity. You can find the pressure sensitivity settings under File, Adjust, Pen Pressure. Clip Studio's instructions tell you to draw on the canvas and it will create its own pressure sensitivity for you, depending on how heavy or light you are with your hand. But I would not suggest doing it this way. I struggled with this for a while until a friend showed me a better way to do it. If you already screwed it up, just restore the settings to default. You'll see a straight line. You want to grab roughly in the middle of that line and then drag up and you'll see these little purple handles appear. This will give you a beautiful curve to your pen pressure and will feel a lot more natural as you're drawing and painting. Congratulations, you've taken care of the two things that you needed before you started making art. Now you can finally start drawing and painting. There is one final thing that you may not notice while you're drawing, but you will definitely notice when you start painting, and that is the brush settings transparency. The brushes on Clip Studio are amazing, but by default they work a little bit differently than the ones in Photoshop. There's a little tool properties window, and no matter what I did to change those properties, it still felt off to me. But then I discovered the secret uh, subtool menu. <laughs> you can either go to Window, Subtool Detail, or click on the little wrench that's in the Tool Property window. The Subtool Detail window is a database of everything that you can do with the brush tool or any other tool that you decide to use. You'll notice that some of the settings in this window are in the Tool Property window. Anything marked with the I on the left side of each tool option will show up in the tool property window. The subtool detail just shows you every tool that you have at your disposal, and the tool property window is a quick access version with the things you may change and need access to regularly. With access to the entire database of brush settings, I was able to get a closer feeling to the brushes I was used to. Before we go any further, I want you to know why I tortured myself to learn a new program when I was perfectly capable of using Photoshop, and why you should too. The important distinction between Photoshop and Clip Studio is what they were built for. Photoshop was built to edit photos. Clip Studio was built for digital art. You can use Photoshop to paint and Clip Studio to edit photos, but there are fundamental differences between the two because of their focus. Photoshop wasn't built for digital artists, but that didn't stop illustrators from using it. 
Craig Mullins, one of the first digital artists and widely considered the father of digital painting, was painting digitally for 10 years with a mouse before he switched to completely digital in 1994. That's the year they invented layers in Photoshop, by the way. I'm guessing that had something to do with it. It was game-changing for editing photos, but even more so for digital illustrations. Digital painting wasn't on Adobe's radar because it simply didn't exist like we know it today. Over time, they developed tools that were mutually beneficial to illustrators and photographers, but the primary focus has always been towards photo editing. Adobe got the jump on any competitors and created more programs designed to help all aspects of the design industry. Clip Studio, on the other hand, was built with a primary focus towards digital art. Originally, their parent company, Celsus, was looking to help animators, then comic artists, and finally illustrators. In 2012, Clip Studio Paint was released. It was great timing because even though Adobe was dominating the digital art market, there was a demand for digital illustrations. And the best part was that they could take advantage of all the advancements drawing software had made over the years while innovating many of their own. Again, the important distinction here was their primary focus, digital artists. Digital painting may not have been on Adobe's radar, but it was the force behind the creation of Clip Studio. It was designed for painting and the tools cater to that workflow, making digital painting feel effortless to express your creativity. 2012 may have been the launch for Clip Studio, but it was 18 years after Craig Mullins started using Photoshop for all his digital commercial work. By 2012, Adobe had launched the Creative Cloud and with it, its suite of landmark industry applications. Pretty much every major studio was using the Adobe Creative Suite to create the next generation of media and entertainment. Digital drawing and painting was synonymous with Photoshop. Since every studio uses the Adobe Creative Suite, it can feel like Photoshop is the smart option. That doesn't mean it's the best one. And as a digital artist, I'm going to want the program that allows me to express my creativity as seamlessly as possible. For me, that's Clip Studio. One of the main reasons I'm drawn to Clip Studio and captivated by the software is the blending tool. It feels smooth. Photoshop feels like I'm pulling paint across each other, where Clip Studio feels fluid and instinctual. You kind of imagine what it would feel like to blend paint together digitally, and Photoshop's mixer brush is always so uncomfortable. <laughs> I honestly avoided it as much as possible. When I tried the Clip Studio blending tool, you know when you get that like god ray coming in and there's that, oh, that's what it felt like. I can't really explain to you exactly why the blending tool on Clip Studio feels so good and that it's equivalent in Photoshop, the mixer brush uh, feels terrible. <laughs> something that you're gonna have to try for yourself. You'll know right away what I'm talking about. You won't have to take any time to get used to it. You will feel it, trust me. The blend tool in Clip Studio is a true blend. Your edge control, which is super critical as an illustrator, will be on another level. Obviously, there's a lot to know with these programs. That's why they have such steep learning curves. But here are my favorite tools so far and why you should definitely add them to your workflow. Pick screen color. This tool lets you color pick from anywhere on your desktop. Maybe it's an image you have saved or something from a site that won't let you save an image and you just want the colors that they use. You go to edit, pick screen color, and hover over your desired color to capture it. The blend tool. Just try it, seriously. This tool will change your life. You can add all kinds of different brushes to give the blend a different texture. Those brushes can also be set up to determine a hard edge, soft edge, or firm edge or amazing edge control in your work. Don't sleep on this tool, especially if you come from Photoshop and you hated the mixer brush. Liquify. Supposedly this is the one tool Photoshop had that Clip Studio users desperately wanted. They have it now, so I guess this is more reason to ditch Photoshop. The Fill Tool. You can tell Clip Studio was designed for digital artists when you use tools like this. There are smart features built into the fill tools like the lasso and paint bucket, so it only fills your line work. You can quickly fill in your drawings with a base layer and move on to rendering your forms. In Photoshop, I would always have a second smaller window open to put my reference in. Clip Studio recognizes that artists need to use references a lot, and they made a permanent version of this called the subview window. You can only see one image at a time, but you can scroll through the images you place in the window. Personally, I think this is helpful so you can focus your attention instead of having an array of images bombarding you with visual information. Quick access menu. Artists generally have a workflow that they get comfortable with. You can still experiment with new things, but you also use the same two to three tools frequently for the bulk of your work. The quick access window lets you save these frequently used tools 
with their specific settings so that you can quickly call on them. I'm not gonna lie, I've only barely scratched the surface of the cool features that Clip Studio has. I really only just started using this program about a month ago. I'm excited to see what else it has in store and share it with you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I can make some tutorials if you guys are interested. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. The only thing missing from me in Clip Studio that I really loved in Photoshop was something called Selective Color. It let you individually adjust colors and it was an incredibly powerful tool if you wanted to see your painting with a new color palette. It's essentially the hue slider if it ate a bunch of pop rocks. I can still bring my finished painting into Photoshop, but it would be nice to see more control over color changes in Clip Studio itself. The only other things that I use in Photoshop that I haven't had a chance to try yet is text halftones, and gradients. As a graphic designer, I tend to use Illustrator for most of this stuff, but I use Photoshop too. These three things are staples in graphic design, and I've seen the tools available on Clip Studio. I just haven't had a chance to get my hands on them. Focusing primarily on just drawing and painting right now. <laughs> I honestly can't wait to get my hands on them, especially the halftones, because I really want to try including that in more of my illustrating work. It's been about a month in my journey with Clip Studio Paint, and though there was some frustration at the very beginning, I've enjoyed every moment of the journey. Getting comfortable with Clip Studio allows me to explore another layer of digital art. My journey reminds me of what it's like to bite into a jelly donut. The first bite or two is just a whisper of sugar until you finally get that bite where you get to the gooey center and it's an explosion of flavor. I'm still exploring the whispers of sugar in my journey of Clip Studio, but I'm so close to the gooey center and creating an incredible work of art that I feel like it's right in front of me. If you're looking to try Clip Studio Paint for the first time either coming from Photoshop or total beginner to digital art. Take your time. The steep learning curve won't intimidate you if you just take care of the basics first. Fix your hotkeys, adjust your pen pressure, and focus on only the brush tool and the eraser tool. That's it. This will help you get comfortable with the basics. And that's when you know the real magic of your journey has just begun. Woo! Thank you Wacom for sponsoring this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Have a happy and healthy creative process.